Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and I am here with something a little bit different. It's not an SCP, it's not a Backrooms article. It's actually just a subreddit. I saw someone on the Reddit before, and I thought it was really interesting. So I thought I could probably spend about 15 to 20 minutes reading it myself. This subreddit is called Life of Norman. Let's get into it. And if you like the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if not, that's fine. I can get back to our normal content the next time. I think we're going to go with what is considered the hottest post on this right, right now. A glimpse of Norman. Whenever Norman felt overwhelmed with stress, he pulled on his jacket, head outside, and buried his hands deep into his pockets and walked without direction. Often he was met with temptation to continue walking. To vanish into obscurity. Where to? Who really knew? Wherever his feet took him. Or preferred when it was a rainy night. It stimulated a sense of comfort for within him. Then again, so did a dark sky adorned with twinkling stars. The stars made more sense to Norman. It was not a social Rubik's Cube. His mind throbbed with questions. Questions Norman couldn't answer, though he tried. Questions about life, about his estranged son. At least it's Friday, Norman reasoned. Tomorrow I'll have the weekend to myself. Here you go. Try to, try to go by new because it seems interesting. Whew. Although sometimes it doesn't really want to load. Norman gets a train. I just read this. <sighs> Wonderful. Red wants to play games now. Norman gets a train. Norman brushed his teeth, tied his shoes, and fed the cat as he did every morning. He donned the, the gabardine, locked the door, and marched himself to the station, arriving exactly long enough before the train that he was able to adopt his usual spot on the platform. It was on time, which was a nice change. He greeted the tall Scotsman he only saw on Fridays, they've been making small talk on their commute for over a decade now. He knew all about his wife and kids, his employer, the classes, and, and testing he, went into, he underwent this time of year to maintain his chartered status. status. His unusual allergies, has one even discovered they're allergic to saffron. His dearly departed grandmother, to say the least, the window to learn his name had passed long ago. He hopped into the carriage and picked up the conversation, so they discovered that they both had spaghetti he 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 all night is for dinner. I don't know what that is. The Scotsman had had a spinach salad on the side, while Norman had not. 
He didn't admit that what he'd actually had on set was a Cadbury cream egg. He noticed that they, they didn't get stuck waiting at the junction and near Hounslow, Hel Hounslow Heath, which was unusual. They pulled into Waterloo, where Norman said goodbye and joined a smoothly moving river of people making their way to the tube. He managed to get a seat on the bank of Lou, the line just moments before it, it departed. That train, too, seemed to have a bit of a spring in its step. Norman climbed out of his station and down the street to the office. He with his ID tag and pulled the door. Well, try to pull the door. It wouldn't budge. Try again. Nothing. What the heck? He looked at his phone where they made as an email that the office was closed something, but came out empty. As he switched back to his home screen, however, he saw it. 822. Charlie wouldn't unlock this door for another 8 minutes. All of his transport connections had been on time, so Norma and it was over half an hour or early for work. I sure do love when it takes forever to load or something. Norman is puzzled. It was a lovely Saturday evening, and Norman had just returned from his usual stroll around the block. He had opted for the shorter route this time, eager to get back home. Two weeks ago, he had purchased a jigsaw puzzle, hoping to find a fun and relaxing way to spend his weekends. Now he was close to completing it. Only a few pieces remained. The puzzle depicted a beautiful mountain range somewhere in the Alps, where a serene blue lake... A blue... Oh... Norman's plan was to finish a puzzle that day, preserve it with the glue, and hang it up in the seal in the kitchen. That sounds like a lot of work for a puzzle. I think you should like to complete them, then never or touch them again, though. After about half, half an hour, Norman had made great progress on the puzzle, despite being distracted by his feline and companion, Norman, who kept jumping on the table, eager to snatch a piece. I love how uh, Norman has a cat named Norman. Don't talk about the spider he, he named, named Mike. That was bad. How dare you. Norman was almost done when he realized something. Puzzling. There was still one gap left, right in the middle of the Azure Lake, but he already used all the pieces in the box. Norman searched every nook and cranny on the table, lifted the box, and even gently moved Norman to aside to check underneath them. But the missing piece was nowhere to be found. Badly frustrated, Norman looked around the room and finally spotted the piece in Norman's cat bed. With a smile on his face, he wiggled his finger at Norman and called him a little rascal. As he reached for the last piece, he accidentally brushed against Norman's favorite tip. Wait, up the little ball with a, a bell inside, causing it to jingle softly. In an instant, Norman appeared by his side and intended to look at him. Okay, Norman, let me finish my puzzle and then we'll have some playtime, Norman said lovingly. With a great sense of satisfaction, Thorne placed Ace the last puzzle piece in the middle of the lake and admired his work for a moment. And then, he turned around and jiggled the inkling blue ball, ready to enjoy some well-deserved playtime with his furry friend. As you can probably tell, Norman's life is a life of routine and nothing ever changing.
Norman loves chocolate. Norman really loves chocolate. He buys a lot of it every week, and he eats about a handful every day. He really, really loves chocolate. Life is hard. Chocolate is easy. Chocolate is Norman's friend. On some days, Norman finds himself laying around on the couch, feeling like a slug. After an hour's rest, Norman still feels late, lousy. No problem, that a bit of chocolate won't fix. At the end of the day, Norman realizes he literally wasted most of it just laying around. Oh well, it's late. Just another handful of chocolate and off to bed. Norman is wide awake at 3am again. Why can't I sleep, he wonders. Something seems a bit off. No idea what. I think we'll go back to how, to what's considered hot about life of Norman. Although, it doesn't look like there's much. Norman buys some peanut butter. Norman stood in the middle of the jams and spread its aisle at the grocery store, staring at the rows of jars with a perplexed expression on his face. He needed to buy peanut butter for his toast in the morning, but his favorite brand, the one he had been eating since childhood, was sold out. There were so many different brands and types of peanut butter to choose from. There was creamy, crunchy, natural, organic, stir, and non-stir. Norman thought the flavored peanut butters were a bit much. Now paralyzed with indecision, Norman had never realized how complicated buying peanut butter could be. He picked up a jar of creamy peanut butter and read the label. It was made with all natural ingredients that had no added sugar. It sounded unhealthy, but he wasn't sure if he would like the taste. Then he saw a jar of crunchy peanut butter next to it. He loved the texture of crunchy peanut butter, but he was worried that it might be too high in salt. He hesitated, trying to decide which one to choose. As he stood there, a one walked past him and reached for a jar of peanut butter without even looking at the labels. Lauren watched in amazement as she confidently made her choice and walked away. Feeling embarrassed by his decisiveness, Lauren quickly grabbed the jar of crunchy peanut butter and headed to the e checkout. As he walked out of the store, he couldn't help but wonder if he had made the right choice, but soon put the thought out of his mind. You only live once, he whispered to himself. The next morning, Lauren spread some of the crunchy peanut butter on his toes and took a bite. It tasted delicious, and he realized that sometimes the simplest choices can be big steps towards, towards expanding your horizon. Thorne finished his toast and left for work happy, resolving to live his life without regrets. I'm proud of you, Norman. You are correct. You do only live once. And you should enjoy every moment of it. Now... Norman eats lunch. Four days a, a week for 27 hours. Oh, whoops. For 27 years, Norman unpacked his lunch for work. He had honed his sandwich into a scientifically perfect marvel. One and a half slices of American cheese, two overlapped, one then covered the bread. Then some mayonnaise with Dijon mustard on the cheese, and two twists of pepper, then a leaf of butter lettuce padded dry with a paper towel, three dill pickle slices, four slices of bologna, and finally, one and a half more slices of American cheese. The cheese grated a moisture barrier against the wet ingredients so the bread would ne ever get soggy. Of course, on Fridays, Norman would go out for lunch as a treat. This week, he decided to try the new place that all his colleagues had been raving about. When Norman walked into the into the grain and bread, he was immediately overwhelmed with the massive chalkboard filled with names. Fun Guy, Country Club, Elvis, Caesar on a, 
Okay, so several dozen more options. Normal the three people cut in front of him in line while he was paralyzed with indecision. Did he really want the carnival or five kinds of meats or the filthy vegan tempeh and sprouts? Above the right corner of the board, Norman found MYOS, over a million combinations, no taxi backsies. Um, I don't want to be a father, but can I just make my own? Norman asked a very hip looking young man at the register. Sure, we've got uh, the make your own sandwich on the board. Great, can I get American cheese, bologna, dough pickle, lettuce with mayo, mustard, and a little black pepper on white bread? Yeah, can I get a name on the order? That was a pretty good sandwich, Norman thought while munching. I used rather a lot more bologna than he normally did, and the mustard was still on the ground, but it was tasty. Several weeks later, Canton, Rishan, and Rashan dragged Morgan back to Great and Bread. Norman covers the he read off his order to purple haired woman. Oh, she said, pointing up at the board. Do you want the norm? Sure enough, the norm was up on the blackboard, and right under the pre EK PBJ crust cut off. Hmm. Norman drives home from work. It had been a satisfactory day at Norman's office. He filed two reports that were due ahead of schedule and made a commendable inroads on a third report that was coming in due. He enjoyed his usual Tuesday lunch of ham and cheese with an apple. In an effort to cut down the carbohydrates as his doctor suggested. He was swapping out his usual bag of potato chips for kale chips. He could admit they weren't quite as satisfying, but they got the job done. I feel like the only outstanding thing about Norman is just how oddly normal he is. Anyway. Towards the end of the day, he had begun to lose steam, so knocked off some more mindless tasks like clearing his inbox of junk and organizing his desktop files. Finally, the sun began to set ink behind in the clouds, and the day was done. Norman collected his coat up from the hooks and from on by his secretary's desk and hurried into his sedan. It was briskly cold out for the last few days. It had been warming up into the 50s, but today things regressed back into the 20s. He could feel his fingers lose the sensation as he maneuvered his door open. Norman took a minute to double check that he had all his important belongings phone, wallet, house keys. He'd learned to adopt this ritual the hard way. Today he was all squared away. He slugged to the radio station he could trust to carry him all the way home. Tonight he was with Classic Rock, then carefully backed out of the lot. He cruised down the city streets that led away from his office building and joined the line of traffic leading to the freeway. At other times of day, he only lived seven minutes in stride from the office, but rush hour is more like 20. <sighs> he enjoyed the radio and looked out at the fading street lines. The children's chalk drawings on the sidewalk and a We Buy Houses flyer as he entered along with the rest of the 9-to-5 workers. He thought about what he might have done for dinner as he sat there. He was in the mood for Chinese, but knew he should really eat the rest of the chicken in his fridge before it spoiled. He decided to return to the dilemma later. He cranked the heat up in the car as temperatures dropped outside. The darkness grew thicker as Norman made it to the freeway, shrouded with headlines in front and back. Things picked up after the first three exits as they led to the most populated neighborhoods in the city. Norman had opted to live in a quieter hamlet. Few restaurants to their options for nightlife, but cheaper cost of living, a bit more breathing room. He was glad to pull off at his exit. Norman slid into his assigned parking site at, at his complex and sat for a minute. Rather than turn off his car and go immediately inside, 
He looked in his face and towards the heating vent, shut his eyes and relaxed for a moment. He felt the tension ooze out of him, serenely sitting in and at the relief of being home. Then, as a particularly uplifting song wrapped up on the radio, he shut the car off and had it in to change into sweatpants and fix Norm with some cat food. <sighs> and I think that is enough Norman for one day. So, as you might have guessed, Norman is an incredibly, almost boringly, normal person. What's interesting about Norman is just how normal he is. Which is kind of a weird paradox if you really think of it. But that's why we don't think of things. We just do as we, we wish. I'm not going to say you should strive to be like Norman or anything like that, because honestly, be yourself. You'll find plenty of happiness in that. Don't be like Norman. Be like you. If you like this video, please leave a like on a, a video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'm sure you or Norman would I'd appreciate it doing that for our content creators you enjoy. If you did not like the video, then you only it wasted 22 minutes listening to me talk about the most normal person that has ever been in written about in fiction. I might return to this one day. I might not. I don't know. I'm not normal. I'm not Norman. Enjoy! I'll see you next time.